Alright, I'm using a different video recorder now because the last one was so bad with the sound. I'm trying to figure out if I should get a different recorder. Um, we had stopped here at 491 AD and hopefully you were able to get through the sound where I was trying to explain that our boy John, he's really obsessed with this 490 accounting. He, all, all of his writings do this. He shifts between fiscal years, he shifts between different kind of accounting methods depending on whether you're accounting for church or Israel. And, you know, we saw that already in Matthew 24, how the Lord shifts between both accounting methods, pre-church and post-church. But John is just like anal about it. it it's, it's a feature of his, and I don't know if, you know, I saw, I saw Moses sort of do it in Genesis 1, but I haven't seen other writers do it until John. Well, he's basically making something out of every single one of these numbers is functioning in some kind of dateline fashion not just the ones that it is typical typically you only do them when they're divisible by seven now Moses did that in Genesis 1 where he was playing on each one of the numbers and Daniel did it only for the first couple of lines that I could see but John is doing it all the time and I really I, I have no idea I mean I know why he's benchmarking it for the history but I don't know what doctrinal meaning he's using here. I mean, some of them are obvious, 44, 37, you know, 19, 10. I mean, but when he gets here, when he's reconciling to the 490s, here and here and here and here, he, he's just going, excuse the expression, apeshit. And the history is that important, but... I haven't seen other writers reconcile like this, so I don't really know what to say about it to add to the last increment where the sound was bad. Now where we have to go now is really kind of pregnant too, and it's going to be hard to talk about this. Who not written names? And of course down here is in the Book of Life. I, there's a lot of doctrine I have to explain about that first. There's this doctrine about being in the book of life. And it's variantly taught and usually poorly taught. But if you go look at Katalepo, and see most people don't even read the Greek, so they don't even know how to tell this. If you go look at Katalepo, which is a Greek verb, and you search at Pan Bible, it's not hard to understand what this is saying. What it's basically saying is that when you're born, that's when you're a human being, not before. Genesis 2-7. That's clear even in English. The pro-lifers, of course, can't read the Bible in any language, so they miss that. But you shouldn't. Just go read Genesis 2-7. When you're born, you're breathing on your own. God breathes the soul of you into your nostrils at birth when the body is out and on the ground. And at that moment, you are written in the book of life. Okay, now maybe they pre-set it up because of foreknowledge, but I don't think so. I think they wait until you're born. You have to be born first to be in the book of life. But, and Moses talks about this to God all the time, especially in like Numbers 14. If you never believe in Christ, then your name is blotted out of the book of life. Ex Catholic Paul. Okay? And Moses knows this. And in Numbers 14 he says to God, blot me out of the book of life. Because he's a believer, he's saved, he's going to heaven. And so you have to be blotted out of the book of life to not go to heaven. Which means that if you were born and you were too young to believe in Christ, or you were born and you were retarded or something or end up having an injury so you're not even capable of saying yes to the gospel. You automatically stay in the book of life and you go to heaven. In order to go to hell, you have to say no 
when you understand the gospel and keep saying no for as long as you live. It's really hard to go to hell is the point. Okay? Really hard to go. You have to be really stubborn. You have to really hate the gospel. And you will be given umpteen bazillion times chance to understand it and to say no before God lets you die. Let's you die. Because it's due diligence disclosure. That is a legal rule. You can talk to any attorney about it. Basically what it means is that if you've got some, especially an asset, that you could use or lose or you must consent to have, you have to get a lot of disclosure about what that is and about your choices and the options if you refuse or accept. Okay, that's been a legal rule for going all the way back in time. And that's what the gospel really is. It's saying, hi, believe in Christ and you'll be saved. Don't believe and you go to hell. It has to be simplified so that anybody can understand it. But that's due diligence disclosure. You can like it. You can lump it. You can say, well, I don't understand. That doesn't make sense. Fine, here's more information. And you get a whole lifetime to know. You get a whole lifetime to say no, and you have to say no your entire lifetime. So if God catches you at a moment when you've just been on a bender, and you lost your girlfriend, and you feel, you know, really low, and you suddenly remember, because He uses moments like that, the Holy Spirit recalls to your mind, that's John 14, 26, He recalls to your mind what the gospel is, and at that moment it just sounds good, and it makes you feel good, and you believe in Christ. And then, you know, five minutes later it's like, what was I doing believing in this stupid gospel? Too late, honey. You got saved five minutes ago. See, that's how clever God is. So, in order to be blotted out of the book of life, names not written means blotted out. At the end of it, they're not written. Okay? That's why, you know, the expression is not written because it's not written by the final at the final point. Same expression is used in Revelation 20. But you were written at the beginning, and you must be blotted out. And Moses knows that. And he said to God, blot me out. You see how that goes? Now, it's real important to say that because what this is going to cover is basically saying is everybody whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Okay, so they're not written when you're born. It's written from the foundation of the world, which actually is much smarter. See, God's always right. I'm always wrong. Um, that's much smarter because if it's written from the foundation of the world when Christ paid for all the sins on the cross, okay, then Satan could check off the people paid for on the list to make sure that everybody on the list got paid for. And then he's also going to use that to make sure that everybody who's on the list gets born. And if one person doesn't get born, it's a mistrial. Satan wins. If one person doesn't get saved, who's, who's written on the book of life and not blotted out, Satan wins. So this solves a major problem I've been having about this whole thing I've been talking to you about for the last eight years. Right here. See how God solves problems? In a nanosecond. Okay, so the names who aren't written from, from the beginning of the world, meaning people who God foreknows will be blotted out because they will never believe, they're the ones who are going to be the biggest, you know, saps for this. It also has, of course, and it's designed to have, a parallel actual historical meaning for that time period. And we'll pick that up in the next increment.